Okay, so for my introduction, um, we know that um, for years we have been looking at um, the low level performance um, in our English learners in their um, state assessments and our district assessments and in, in the classroom as well. So the two most um, um, important subjects that uh, where they are always getting those low um, scores, it's in reading and writing. So that is where I decided to focus. Um, so the purpose then is to find out, well, I wanted to find out um, what, what strategies um, the teachers were using to help the um, English learners to improve um, in their writing. So for the, uh, for that purpose on the theoretical framework, um, I was looking at um, a self-regulation and metacognition. Um, it first started with Mickey Bums in 1977, and he was using it as a cognitive behavioral intervention um, to help um, you know the students to. Um, uh, it was an intervention that involved interactive uh, learning, modeling, and scaffolding. So then in 18, I'm sorry, 1987, then we got uh, Harms, I'm sorry, Harris and Graham, and they took that idea to develop the self-regulation. So self-regulation, it's end motivation is what we see, um, or what I saw in the um, uh, literature review. Um, that they were, you know, always kind of like together. They were used together. And one of the explanations um, that I found was that um, they involved three important components. And those were the, um, com com I'm sorry, cognition, which is the mental process involving knowing, understanding, and learning. Uh, the metacognition, which is, which is often described as learning to learn and the motivation which is the willingness to engage our metacognitive and cognitive skills. So um, those are going to be, you know, that is going to be the framework that I will be using um, throughout the, um, the study. Then we have our, okay, so then that brought me to my um, research questions. So I wanted to know you know, how well the teachers were prepared to meet the needs of the um, English learners. So we know that, um, you know, again, it has been years that they have been talking about their low scores. And we also know that strategies have been used, like, also for a very long time. And there is also research that shows that those, um, some of those strategies were, you know, better than others. And uh, for English um, only um, students, they have found that um, they have made a lot of improvement in their writing. But then we don't see that in our English learners. So um, what was the reason? So again, literature shows that um, some of those strategies are also being uh, implemented to English only students because there is that idea that our English learners, they need, you know, they always have like low expectations for them. So with that, um, so I wanted to know then, you know, my questions were how teachers prepare to meet the, the different needs or the different levels of linguistic needs of the English learners, uh, what specific writing strategies um, they implement to address the needs of the English learners and what strategies are actually working or showing that they work to improve um, their writing scores. So then, um, so I am also using the um, that mix approach. Okay, we, I will have the quality, um, qualitative and quantitative um, information or data. So for our study, uh, I'm sorry, for this class then, you know, I use the quantitative and then um, this is where I had my huge aha moment because, okay, now there comes my hoo-hoos um, because they, um, I also 
you know, I also thought about having the same number of questions, and what I did was, okay, so I needed to have the same number of questions for quantitative um, uh, questions and qualitative. So, but then when I put everything together, you know, oh my gosh, I, I, I didn't have enough um, questions for my quantitative so that I could have a, a more var variation. In. And then I also was having a hard time in getting, um, in cleaning the data, which I was like, okay, from where are they getting those percentages? What it's, you know, I, I, I was just getting the, the, the raw data and I read it, you showed it, and I don't know how many people uh, talked about, you know, getting the average, getting the mean, and I was not able to, to, to see it. And um, not until Thursday when you went with Jonathan step by step, and then uh, when uh, um, Michelle also showed what she had, and then hers was different um, also from Jonathan, but then I was able to see how you actually got that, you know, that, that number that I didn't include there because, you know, I was looking at what I had and it didn't look like everybody else. So I was like, okay, what's going on? My, my, you know, my bar graph, they don't look, you know, uh, uh, like everybody else. And so that was the one part that I was missing. So that is, you know, something that I'm going to go back and I'm going to fix. And, um, and the other thing that I had, um, oh, okay, so, so one thing that I changed was to have more quantitative questions, and I know that some of those quant quant qualitative questions, I could make it into quantitative questions, um, and that is what I did, but, um, you know, still, that was a mistake that I made, but having those number of questions, also open-ended questions, it was, impressive because I was able to confirm some of the things that they answered for the uh, uh, quantitative part. So I was like, um, and almost like you, Kelly, that you were talking about, I want to know about, okay, we're, we want to know if their teachers are prepared to meet the needs of our English learners. So I wanted to know the experiences that they had, um, were they participating in staff development to support the English learners, um, how many, um, the educational background that they had also. And I was able to see that through their, through the open and responses that they had. And I could totally see it. I was not even, you know, we have, so our particip my participants, we had um, from um, teaching experiences, I had one that was the first year and um, bachelor, and she's still working on the credential. The, um, the you know the, the, the teacher with the with most experience was eight had 18 years a master's and you could see their the difference in their in their answers how they're answering the questions and the um, and then there was one that even though it had the number of almost you know like 13 or 14 years of teaching the um, it only had a bachelor's degree. And also, her answers were like totally different, actually, uh, for the <coughs> participant, you know, her answers were always, you know, like in the low spectrum when they were, when she was talking about the strategies, when she was talking about how she was helping the students, when she was talking, it was like very, very basic, and, and it was like, um, you know, what, what do you do to, to motivate the students Oh, I just give them something easy to do, and mm -hmm. I don't want them to um, to to. I don't want I don't want the students to get overwhelmed. So I just give them something easy. And and again, you know, and there it goes. What we have been reading that when the teachers are not prepared, then they just have those low um, expectations for the students. And it's not that we're gonna go um, or do something easy is that it's always, you know, just having those expectations. Yeah, you can meet your students where they are, but then, you know, you build on, on what they know and you start to bring them up. And so but most of the law of bilingual education is that you're not with them in that content. Mm -hmm. Yes, you must go to them in the town. That is illegal. Not only is not good practice, it's actually illegal. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and so that was something that I that I that I noticed with you know with the questions. I was like, oh, oh. So um, I thought that was interesting. And um, the other, okay. Oh, the other the other problem that I found in my in uh, through the pilot was that um, not all teachers you know participated at the end, and so. I